Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with another investment portfolio review of someone out there in the community. I get tons of questions every week, uh, people asking me to review their portfolio, and while I don't do private consulting anymore, I thought this would be a great way to help out all you out there in the community and put it in a video. So I'll be reviewing one of your portfolios right there in the Bowtie Nation, uh, and even if it's not your portfolio, I think it's gonna be a great experience on seeing how that portfolio review process, how it works, and how to apply that to your own stocks, right? How to see the risks and the gaps in your own portfolio, and what you might be able to do to fix that. Uh, I'll also be answering uh, questions directly from the investors themselves, so watch through the video because I know a lot of you are going to have these same questions. If you want your portfolio reviewed, join the weekly newsletter with the link I'll leave in the description below. It's totally free and you'll see all the news, trends, and stocks I'm following each week. Then once a month, I'll put a call out for portfolios and give you the email to send your questions. So look for that link in the description below. Before we get started though, you know I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. And by the way, if you do send in your portfolio, understand it could be a few weeks before I can get to it and, and put a video out and you give me the right to share it in a video and give you whatever anonymous name I want. And today's couple is straight from one of my favorite Twilight Zone episodes, Arthur and Edna Castle. Now, all you out there in the nation know I am a huge Twilight Zone addict, so if you do send in your portfolio, you're probably gonna become one of the people in the Twilight Zone or maybe from The Simpsons. Anyway, Arthur and Edna are 60 and 56 years old. They just left New York to move to sunny Florida to escape the snow and income taxes. Uh, they sold their home and investment properties and have a million dollar portfolio. So here's your chance to see how to invest a million dollars and really what it looks like. Now, Arthur tells me he had a remodeling and real estate investment business there in New York, but hasn't started anything in Florida. Uh, Edna has joined a family practice clinic as a doctor and is expecting to make about $300,000 a year there, but then would like to retire within five to seven years max. Uh, she's likely gonna switch to a part-time telemedicine job after that, making around 6,000 a month for a while though. Moral of the story here, kids, is just become a doctor, okay, or, or a nurse. Um, the wife just got back from Miami, had to fly there to take the nursing exam before our move to Tampa later on this year. And so I was looking at uh, nursing salaries there in Florida. Oof, man, got myself a sugar mama there. But I digress. Okay, back to the portfolio. Uh, the castles are estimating their expenses in retirement between 100000 to 120000 but could probably make do on a ninety grand if they had to. And they bought a house in Florida and have about $150,000 equity in it right now. The only other debt is a personal loan for $88,000. There's no credit card balances and they have two cars paid off and are investing about 20% of their current income. Now they say they're willing to take some risks to grow their current portfolio from the million dollars in it now to two million to, to pay for those expenses and they're just wondering how to invest and if that's even possible. I'll be using the portfolio tracker spreadsheet that I developed to review their portfolio. It's a great tool, not just for tracking your investments, but, but some great goal planning stuff that we'll look at. So look for the link in the description below to get your copy of that. Uh, after I do review their portfolio, I'll be answering Arthur and Edna's questions, so stick around because I know a lot of you are gonna have the exact same questions. So here we are in the spreadsheet. Uh, I've put in the ticker symbol on the left here, uh, the number of shares and the price paid for each stock or ETF, and then you click load stock data and the spreadsheet is gonna pull those from our online database. Besides the stocks and the funds, we can also scroll over and put in other assets where we can scroll down and put in some of these other assets if they own any Bitcoin, real estate property, uh, gold, commodities, and really you can change some of these headings for, for whatever you have. They actually have a Vanguard money market fund that is quite a bit of their portfolio. So you put in there the amount that you have in that portfolio, as well as a long-term yield or return that you expect from that, that asset. And we're, we're gonna see how the spreadsheet uses that later on. So besides the $440,000 the castles have in stocks, they also have this $25,000 in cryptocurrencies, $20,000 in a real estate investment property, uh, about 11,000 in cash and just over a half a million dollars in this Vanguard money market account uh, that they're waiting to invest that back into stocks. And you can see their portfolio here. They've got uh, a lot of these ETFs, love seeing these ETFs here. They've got the total stock market fund. They've got a, a few dividend funds here, the uh, Global X Super Dividend in ETF, the Super Income Preferred ETF, as well as uh, some of the you know, some of, the, uh, some of the individual stocks that we'll talk about. And what I wanna do, I wanna scroll over here and it's set up to tell you how much of your portfolio you have in each of these, what's percentage of your money that you have in each of these ETFs or the stocks. 
And normally this would be a warning if you have anything over 10% in one investment, but most of these are those diversified funds. So you can see here, they've got 24.5% of their stock portfolio in this Vanguard total stock market index fund. So that's not really a warning there, right? Because that total stock market fund in itself is diversified across thousands of stocks. So I wouldn't necessarily be wor worried about that. Now, a few of the individual stocks here do show some higher concentrations as well, like this 9.2% they have in shares of AGNC investment, but it's actually only a small part of their overall million dollar portfolio, you know, since they have so much in that money market account. Again, these percentages are just the percentages within the stock portfolio. Now for most investors where this top section here of stocks and funds is gonna be most of your portfolio. So if you do have most of your portfolio, most of your wealth in these stocks and funds, then I would limit any individual stock to, to no more than five or 10% really at the most. And we've talked about that on the channel before. It just sets your portfolio up for too much risk if any one stock uh, is 10 or 20 or 30% of your portfolio and something happens to that company. Now, one thing we do immediately notice if we scroll over here to the sector that uh, is, is filled out when you, when you put in your stock symbol here, that a lot of these are real estate investment trusts, those REITs. Now, I love REITs and they produce a solid dividend yield, but we could probably add some stocks in other sectors. You know, we're gonna see later, they have a very large concentration in these REITs and real estate stocks. Uh, those REITs will produce a decent income yield, but don't typically allow for much growth. So if your goal is to grow your portfolio, you're gonna need something here as well. I also noticed there's no bonds in the portfolio and I know bonds have sucked so far this year, but, but the sell-off has probably run its course. And one thing that we'll talk about later here is, is that idea of safety of capital versus growth. You know, with just six years left to retirement, the castles really need to balance that desire to grow the portfolio with the need to make sure that that money is there when they need it. And bonds are still one of the best ways to do that. Now, having that $566,000 in the money market fund is gonna be an opportunity over the next year, uh, being really able to slowly invest that back into the market and some of the other assets that we'll talk about. But we do need a plan for how they're gonna do that. Now, this is something we've talked about on the channel before, is really having that formalized plan in writing even, you know, how you're gonna invest that cash that's in your account. I, I know a lot of you out there, you're watching the market every day, watching stocks fall, really freaking out, wondering uh, you know, how to invest that cash, when to invest it, whether you should buy the dip, when stocks are gonna fall, and, and how you invest that for those highest returns possible. In reality though, the only thing you're gonna get from that is that gray hair and, and probably a heart attack from just daily freaking out over the market. Instead, I want you to make a plan for how and when you're gonna invest that money. You know, for example, this $566,000 in the money market fund here, we might put 15% of that in bonds now and 15% in some st stocks across different sectors. And we're gonna talk about more, of that, more about that in a minute, but then we're gonna set points where we plan on investing the rest. You know, say if the S&P 500 falls to 3,500, then we invest another 25% of the cash. Then if it does reach 3,000, we invest another 25%. And finally, you know, if it falls as far as 2,500 uh, on the S&P 500, we invest the rest of the cash. So having this kind of a formalized plan in writing for how you're gonna invest and when is gonna do a couple of things for you. You know, not only is it gonna give you the opportunity to use that cash to buy in at lower prices if the market keeps on falling, because without a plan, let's be honest here, folks, a lot of people, they're just gonna freak out. They're gonna buy, continue to buy on the dips every day almost uh, and be totally fully invested in cash within a week and not be able to take advantage of those lower prices. More importantly though, this is the kind of plan that is gonna replace all the heart meds that you're taking because of that market stress. Seriously though, having a plan like this, a formalized written plan means you're not gonna be stressing out over the market every single day, wondering if you should, should invest, when you should invest, buy the dip, or if you're gonna miss it, right? You've got a plan, you're gonna stick with it, and you're just not gonna worry about timing the market. I really like this portfolio overview tab here for that big picture look. And here it says they do have a 53% in P2P, uh, but that's really the money market account, right? The box is still coded to PD, P2P and loans, so, so I need to update that. Uh, understand that when you do get the spreadsheet online, then you have uh, access, lifetime access to any updates that I make, uh, any extra features that I put in there. You just go back into Teachable, into your Teachable account and re-download those new spreadsheets when I, when I upload them. But again here, we see there's no bonds, less than 2% in real estate and Bitcoin, though quite a bit of the stock portion is in real estate stocks. So we've got a little bit more than that. 
uh, and then 41% of the portfolio is in stock. So basically this is a cash and stock portfolio. So I would definitely like to see it diversified out a little bit more with some of these other assets. Uh, definitely a little bit more in bonds. I think they've got enough real estate in the real estate stocks, but, but maybe a few other assets as well. Now the sector breakdown for the stocks drives this home again, right? They have everything in real estate stocks and then a few financial service stocks. Uh, now they do have quite a bit of diversification across the sectors in those ETFs in the portfolio. So a lot of the dividend ETFs they have own different stocks in different sectors. But I think there is an opportunity here to use some of that money in the money market account to buy into the, some of these stocks in other sectors. Now the spreadsheet will also compare two stocks against each other. So just put in the ticker symbols for each and it's gonna go into the database to pull not just the fundamental ratios of those two stocks, but also the sector averages to, to really give you a great comparison against each other as well as against the averages for those sectors. But let's go to the investing goals tab because I think this is really gonna bring a lot of this home for the castles. Uh, average their ages here at 58 years old uh, and six years to retirement. They're investing 20% of their income, uh, which is about $5,000 a month. And what the spreadsheet is doing here, it's taking what you put in this portfolio tab, all of your investments and adding them, them up for this current portfolio. Then it's just taking some historical market return information to estimate you know, with the returns on your assets and, and how much you have in each asset, what that portfolio might be in that many years to retirement. So here it's saying you know, that million dollar portfolio invested about half in stocks and half in the money market fund can grow to about 1.8 million in six years uh, on those historical returns and with that $5,000 a month invested. And we're gonna come back to what that means, but I've also put in their $8,500 a month uh, for retirement expenses that they're planning on retirement, which is at the low end of what they expect, but we can play around with the numbers here. I've put in 15% uh, for their capital gains tax, and I'm gonna use this 36,000 for combined social security, which would be about $1,500 each per month. Now, obviously these are numbers that you would change according to your own situation, but here it just sa says that the tax rate with social security, uh, the castles would need about $84,000, you know, after paying taxes and with that social security check, would need $84,000 a year from their investments to pay that $8,500 a month in expenses. And then the last step here, if they take 4% a year from their portfolio, and you can change this to, to 5% or whatever you wanna do, play around with the numbers here. But if they take that 4% out of their portfolio each year to pay for their expenses, they'll need about a $2 million portfolio to produce that $84,000 a year in annual cash flow. And we're actually pretty close to that with their current investments. You know, even with half of, the, half of that in that money market fund and, and an overall annual return of just 5.5%, right? Uh, they, this is estimating about a 5.5% annual return on that stock and money market portfolio. They get to $1.8 million in six years if they keep investing the $5,000 a month. So while we're going to talk about what types of investments to buy with that cash and how to do it, I don't think they need to get very aggressive, especially since they'll be needing that money in six years. So here I think I would add some money in bonds, maybe up to 15% even of the portfolio. Uh, and yes, bonds haven't provided that kind of safety so far this year, but the rise in rates has slowed down and I think the sell-off is, is mostly done. So I think these are again offering some attractive yields and returns. Here I would go with maybe some short-term bonds like the Vanguard Short-Term Bond Fund, that's ticker BSV, that's paying a 2.8% dividend yield right now and won't be quite as negatively affected as long-term bonds if those interest rates do keep on going up. You know, with these, you're still gonna get that safety plus a better return than you would with the money market. I think they can also start to put some of that money market fund back into stocks of relatively safer sectors. It may be something like consumer staples, utilities, and healthcare sectors that tend to hold up in, in a recession. Uh, one, just to even out the portfolio a little bit, but also for a little bit higher return than they're getting from the money market. Now, they could go the easy route with some of the sector funds like the Spider Utilities Fund, that's the ticker XLU, or the Spider Consumer Staples Fund, the XLP, or just pick a few of the individual stocks within those sectors. Again, though, I don't think they need to push all that money market cash into stocks immediately either. Uh, they're still well on their way to that goal, so even with that lower money market account, so I would make a plan for investing the money. Uh, they might say put 15% of the cash in bonds now, 15% in some of the sector stocks, um, then just plan on putting the rest of the cash into the market only if the S&P index falls further to, to those certain points. But again, with just six years left to retirement, they really don't wanna be pushing all their cash all in into stocks right now just in case the market does continue to fall and hasn't rebounded before they start retirement. 
Now, I will say in this situation uh, with that shorter time horizon, so really the idea of lower risk tolerance because of that and safer investments, it is balanced a little bit by the fact that they already have a quite a large portfolio and, and could probably cut their expenses a little bit if they needed to. So that gives them a little bit more risk tolerance, that optionality to, uh, to cut their expenses, right? They also have a little, can take a little bit more risk because of Edna's plans to work part-time after, you know, after she retires. So, and that profession pays so well, so they can cover some of their expenses uh, just in case they need a little bit more time to, to let stocks rebound after the sell-off. Now, the Castles also had a few questions on how to invest their money that I didn't cover, so let's look at those. They ask, what are your favorite cash flow assets? Uh, you know, it is hard to beat direct real estate investments, uh, especially at that higher tax bracket where they are, but, but prices are so expensive right here. So I would be very picky on the deals. Maybe get back into that remodeling business that, uh, that Arthur used in New York and wait a year or two to, to allocate more of their money into direct real estate. They also ask, once we retire, we would like to create cash flow from the dividends to live on. Uh, we would like to generate that $10,000 a month if possible. Do you have any suggestions for how to accomplish that? And now here, generating $120,000 annually, so about $10,000 a month on a $2 million portfolio, is about 6%, which would be really aggressive for dividend investing. I would plan on more like 80,000 from the dividends. That would be about a 4% yield, so you'd be able to invest in stocks that are a little bit safer, maybe a little bit lower yield, but, but are gonna grow the money as well, and make, a, make up for the rest of that on just selling stocks a little bit here and there. I just don't want to see them chase yielding stocks, those high yield 10, 15% uh, dividend yield stocks just for that sake of cash flow, right? It looks like they're already doing a great job in focusing on those dividend funds and the real estate investment trust, those REIT stocks. I would just add maybe some direct real estate exposure into that uh, when those prices do come down, as well as maybe some other assets like some tax liens, very safe assets that are going to be a very good income return. They also ask, we currently put 20% of Kathy's pay into savings for investing. Uh, we're looking at syndicates once we save up to $25,000 or $50,000. Do you have any recommendations on which syndicates are best? Now, what they're asking here is syndicates are usually investing alongside an angel investor. So, you know, really actually getting into the venture capital and startup investing that I used to work as an analyst. Uh, honestly, though, I really don't think they need the risk. You know, we saw the portfolio comes very close to their goal, even on that five and a half percent annual return uh, with how much they're investing right now. So, you know, it's a big step in analysis to get into those syndicates, making sure that you're getting a good deal and the return is going to be there. You have to construct a portfolio of several syndicates to make sure that, uh, you know, you're diversified across different deals. So, Honestly, I really just don't think you need the risk. Another question here, what percentage should we allocate towards cryptocurrencies? We see the light of this new asset class and, and have been investing in blockchain backbone companies. Here, I think I would stick with less than 5% of their wealth in cryptocurrencies. And I think that goes well for any investor out there. Uh, in their specific situation, they just really don't need the risk. So I hesitate to recommend too much in any of these moonshot type investments. Uh, even on the 3% of their wealth in cryptocurrencies, though, if it 10Xs, if it goes tenfold uh, over the next five to 10 years, that's still a 30% portfolio return. So, and pretty much would guarantee they meet their goals. Even if they, but then if they lose that 3%, it's really no big loss. They can still meet their goal with that. Click on the video to the right for how to create a dividend portfolio that will pay your bills, a dividend snowball that grows into a cash machine. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.